Acts chapter 28 from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please go there and follow me along. Acts chapter 28 verses 24 on to verse 27. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Yeah, yeah, um, I, uh, we, we're going to go through this little video here. Um, you know, people, Church of the Living God, brothers, sisters, I'm not talking to you. I'm, I'm not talking to you. This is for those of you um, poor, foolish, deceived, deceiving people out there who want to bury your head in the sand, wrap yourself up in your warm little security blanket and suck your thumb and bow your knees to the Vatican. You have been warned, you have been admonished, you have been rebuked. The information is out there, out there for you to see. And <laughs> this, uh, this smoking joke met with Francis recently, and um, I was made aware of this, and oh my God. Do you need any more proof? What more proof do you need to, uh, to know and to understand that America is in the hand of the Vatican? Okay? And that the world leaders are they going to the head rabbi in Jerusalem? No, they are not. Where are they going? They're going to the Vatican. They're going to the Pope. And you have to remember too, Pope Francis, <coughs> Pope Francis is a Jesuit. And according to the Jesuit's own doctrine, every Jesuit is subservient unto the superior general of the order who is Arturo Sosa, the Black Pope, the most deadliest man on earth. So, Francis is the front man, and Sosa is the puppet master. We're going to look at this. There, there's not much commentary on it, but get a load of this. Get a load of this. You scoundrel, Jesuit, conspirator, traitor, you filth. You and your president, Kamala Harris. Look at that. Look at that. Did you note the um, purple color on the guy who met Smoking Joe? Purple. <laughs> scarlet, purple, scarlet. Her colors are purple and scarlet. 
Uh, I'm not sure this is appropriate, but there's a tradition in America. The guy understands English. Give me a break. That the president has what is called a command coin. That he gives to warriors and leaders. Warriors and leaders. And uh, you are the most significant warrior for peace I've ever met. <laughs> it's not funny. Did you hear what that guy, did you hear what this scoundrel just said of this Jesuit? <laughs> it's not funny. The most, the greatest warrior, what, what did he say, what did he say, huh? Huh? It's mumbled here, but... And, uh, you are the most significant warrior for peace I've ever met. Lay egg. The most significant warrior for peace that I've ever met. Francis, the Jesuits, warriors for peace. And by peace, he shall destroy many. You people. Well, what, what more do you need? What more do you need? Hmm? And with your permission, I'd like to be able to give you a coin. It has the U.S. seal on the front. U.S. seal, which is the symbol what's of rock. different with this coin? Usually, but I know my son would want me to give this to you because on the back of it, I have the state of Delaware, the 261st unit my son served with. E so che mio figlio sarebbe contento che gli do questo perché non c'è la immagine della Casa Bianca ma dello Stato di Delaware. E la tradizione è. I'm only kidding about this. E scherzo. Next time I see you, you don't have it. You have to buy. Look at that. Okay, that, the right hand that represents this with the enveloping hand of the Vatican. See, you got to remember that the Vatican also works in symbolism, just like the Masons do, okay? The Masons are controlled by the Jesuit order. People. People, wake up. Please wake up. Please wake up and get your head out from betwixt your buttocks. You know, you know, you can call me a conspiracy theorist or whatnot. Um, no, I'm a conspiracy factualist, thank you very much. Okay? You've been warned. The information is still out there today that proves that the Vatican is Satan's church and that the Vatican runs the world. It is being allowed to run the world for judgment, of course. And once we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed, caught up, resurrected, look at that, look at that symbolism right there. Why did they focus on that? It's a, it's a sign. See, these people work in signs and symbolisms. Look at that. What else do you people need to, what else do you need? But no. No, you want to keep living in La La Land, a lot of you, don't you? Mm. Drinks. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only Irishman you've ever met who's yeah. never had a drink. Irishman, Irish Catholic. <laughs> Hanno portato il whisky.
Doesn't it make you proud, America? Yeah, all you Democommies? Yeah. Hey, 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 don't. I'm not a Republican either, okay? I'm for none of the parties that are here in America. Thank you very much. Remember, your white knight savior Trump, he also did the same thing with this account vote. I know. And he didn't get to play in the Major League Baseball until he was 45 years old because he was black. Non gli hanno permesso di giocare nella Lega principale fino a che aveva 45 anni perché era nero. He was a pitcher. E lui era un battitore, quello che batteva. And usually pitchers lose their arm when they're 35. In genere loro non guadagnano come già. He pitched to win on his 40. Seventh birthday. The press walked in the locker room and said his name was Satchel Page. Si chiamava Satchel Page. Allora i giornalisti sono andati nello spogliatoio. The commanding officer said, "Satch, no one's ever pitched to win at age 47. How do you feel about pitching to win on your birthday?" E tutti hanno detto: "Nessuno ci ha mai riuscito a fare questo a 47 anni. Come ti senti averlo fatto il giorno del tuo compleanno?" And he looked at me and said, "Okay, that's. I beg your pardon, brother. That that that's enough." That's enough of that. We, that's enough. Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. Bear with me here for a moment. Doesn't it just make you feel happy for America, huh? Doesn't it just fill you with hope? Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. Verses 5 unto the close of the chapter. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 5, on to the close of the chapter. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, Seest thou what they do? Seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Now, you got to remember, doctrinally and dispensationally, this is specifically unto the Jewish people, Israel. But for our instruction and in righteousness, which is key here, when you go so far as to commit, the, commit evil against the Lord, to purposely make him turn away from you, to bring wrath upon you, um, your goose is pretty much cooked unless you come to repentance. But how many of you really want to do that? Hmm? A lot of you are so willing to try anything else but the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. The, the digging through the wall is significant because it denotes secrecy. So that he had to dig through a wall to get to a door to open up to see what these people do in secret. But of course, um, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, sees everything that you do. So I went in and saw, and behold, Every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark. Every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, the Lord seeth us, seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Hmm, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. 
But note that it says the ancients. The ancients. The ones who ought to know better. Okay? The ones that ought to know better. The ancients that ought to be instilling the fear of God amongst the people through the authorized version of the scriptures. You know what's interesting? With the steel of the Jesuit Punyard? See, the steel of the Jesuit Punyard, okay, is a weapon for population control. And it's evolutionary in mindset in the delivery of the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Because those who are youthful may be strong enough to survive, okay? But then again, you have the sick who receive it, the homeless. You have the elderly who receive it. So see, it's evolutionary in mindset and principle that it gets rid of the, uh, the old. It gets rid of the weak, the sickly, so that the strong may survive. And remember, less people on the earth, less people to control. A little bit easier for the son of perdition. Okay? But the ancients are the ones here that are noted out. The ancients. The ones who ought to know better. The ones that they want to get rid of, but yet the ones also that are not standing in the gap, pleading. Verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Greater than that? Yeah. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz. Ninus, the son of Nimrod and Semiramis. Ninus. Tammuz. You know the cross that our Lord was crucified on? You know, it's a T. T for Tammuz. Mm-hmm. Tammuz. The son, like I said, of Nimrod and Semiramis. And Semiramis married her son, Ninus, Tammuz. Okay. Verse 15. Then said he unto me, Thou hast, hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Really? Really, huh? And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, turning their back to the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Sun worship. Baal worship. This is talking about modern day Roman Catholicism. You know the round cookie of the Catholic priests? That they slowly elevate. It's sun worship. It's Baal worship. With their backs toward the temple of the Lord. Okay. Meaning that they're against the Lord. And they worship the sun. The slow rising of the sun. Catholicism. This is where Catholicism. Modern Catholicism. Got its starts from. From Babylon, from Egypt, going into modern day Roman Catholicism. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? Is it a light thing to you, Catholic, that in order for you to receive Jesus, you have to eat him? And you have to drink blood, which is against scripture. They don't turn it into blood, by the way, that with their transubstantiation, the magic cadabra, hocus pocus nonsense. Okay, that's that's hooey. 
And you know what, brethren? There are people out there that actually truly believe that the priest, the Jesuit priest, who says his abracadabra, hocus pocus, they actually, people actually do believe that he turns it into, you know, the cookie, into the flesh of Jesus Christ, and the wine, into the blood. They actually, people actually believe that. How could anyone with a right mind fall for transubstantiation? I don't understand. Because they've closed their ears. They don't want to see. They don't want to hear. They don't want to understand. You just want to go on, don't you? You're going to get what's coming to you, people. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Time of Jacob's trouble. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Because he's cried to you. He's like, hey, come to me. Here I am. Come to me broken, contrite, and fear me and call upon my name. Okay? But no. No. God's wrath is coming. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's coming soon. When? We don't know. But with the things going on as they are right now, time is truly running out, people. Now go to Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 5. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me, and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man! These men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of, uh, should I be inquired of at all by them? Right now, what time is it here, my time? Well, you, you can see it on the thing there. It's 10.08 a.m. my time, Sunday. Right down less than a block away, there's a Lutheran church over there, Catholics, okay, Catholics. Right now, they're in their church buildings. Right down the way, there's a Methodist church building. Right now, they're in their church buildings. Oh, Doing the social distancing, bowing, licking the bottom of the foot of the Vatican. Over there, there are some Hispanics, a Hispanic church also licking the foot, the bottom of the foot of the Vatican. Right now, at this very moment. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. Their idols in their heart. You see, Christians... They idle their buildings. They idle their little pet doctrines. Their church buildings are everything to them. See, brethren, people, this is why I am so adamant about we as the Church of the Living God dropping the word Christian when it pertains unto ourselves. Okay? Especially with nowadays. Because when you say to most people, Christian, oh, you mean you're Catholic? Oh, you mean you're like one of those Joyce Meyer fools, right? But see, these people in these church buildings, right now, as we are speaking, right now, they're in their church buildings. They set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Stumbling block. You lost people. It's a stumbling block to you, isn't it? 
when you hear these foolish Christians say to you, just believe. God loves you. God's not mad at you. God's not going to judge you. Just believe and receive. Makes no sense to you. I know that because you have, many of you have said to me, and when I've said that to you publicly, you've even said to me, it's like, you, you're right, Brett. You're right. It doesn't make any sense. Any sense. But you're just not ready to hear it. Right? Right? That's what you said? You're just not ready? Especially because I'm so mean about it, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you don't have to be so mean. You want to know what mean is, dear friend? When you get left behind and you have to deal with these Catholics, you're going to see what mean really is. You're going to see what the true definition of that is. Okay? You get offended because someone yeah, raises his voice at you who's concerned for you. Because you got your head in the sand. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. And those of you, you Christians. Believing yourselves saved just because you believe. And never came broken. Never had any godly sorrow. Never called upon the name of the Lord. Hmm. <laughs> See, it's, it's something that happens in a moment. It's not a step one, step two, step three. No. See, it, I can explain that to you. and It has been explained to you. But see, if you're lost and you've uh, put the stumbling block of, of your iniquity before your face, I'm just um, peeing against the wind, pretty much. Let's continue. Two more verses here in Ezekiel chapter 14. Therefore, speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. He'll answer him when he comes to the according, uh, cometh according to the multitude of his idols. What does that mean? That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. What what does that mean? In verse four, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. What does that mean? What does that mean? Go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. Verses 1 under verse 4. What is he talking about? Here in verse 4 in Ezekiel chapter 14. Where he says, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Okay, remember, he says that they put the stumbling block of their iniquity before his face, okay, and set up idols in their heart. Isaiah 66, verses 1 under verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Hey, you church building going Christians. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? See, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you know, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, God dwells within you, okay? Ye are, your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit, okay? For all these things hath my hand made. And all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit 
and trembleth at my word. Look at the time. See, you can see it right there. Okay. At this moment, at this moment, you got the, the, uh, the Lutherans probably reading out of their New Revised Standard Version. You got the Methodists down there probably reading out of the NIV or their ESV. Okay, you got the, uh, the Hispanic uh, church building over there reading out of the um, Renal Libera, the one that you can get at uh, Walmart that is based upon a mending, um, uh, putting together of Alexandrian and Antiochian texts. Basically, the one that you can get at Walmart, the uh, Renault Lavera, the 1961 or whatever, that's a, mend a melding together of both the manuscripts of the Vatican and attempting to put a little of the Texas Receptus in there. Okay? Because um, you read in the uh, RVR that the one that you can get at Walmart readily here... Um, it's, I've come to call sinners, but no repentance, okay? That has been documented in an older video that was done here on the channel about text Greek and uh, that kind of stuff. I'll, sh uh, I'll try to link that in the description box if I remember, okay? So, do these people tremble at the Word of God? How can they? Because they don't have the Word of God. Here's the Word of God, the authorized version of the Scriptures. But no, the New Revised Standard Version for the Methylics, or for the Lutherans. The Methylics over here, okay? <laughs> Beg your pardon. Okay, NIV, ESV, okay? And just all the other churches here in town. There's a whole lot of them. Reading from the NIV, the Catholics, of course, either use the Revised Standard Version, the New American Bible, or, or the St. Joseph Edition, or something, or the uh, New American Bible Revised Edition. Yeah, hath God said. You think these people tremble at the Word of God? No. No. They tremble at the Word of the Vatican, which is Satan. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. Vain sacrifices. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. Because the perfect sacrifice has been made today. You know, in this dispensation, when our Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, he shed his blood on that cross. Okay? He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol, yea. They have chosen their own ways. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. What did he mean in Ezekiel there? Huh? Right here. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. So when you're looking in Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4 again, when he says that, okay, he chooses your delusion. You want to believe in something that's a lie? Huh? You want to put up your idols in your heart? You want to put the stumbling blocks of your iniquity right before your face? Huh? You want to commit idol worship in these church buildings? Huh? You want to make an idol out of your little satanic pet doctrines that totally are against scripture? 
You choose the things that God delights not in. You want that when he says here in Ezekiel 14 verse 4, Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, the one who's supposed to speak for the Lord, okay? I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. So the ancients, the ones who are supposed to know better, every one of them is given to covetousness. And the ones that are supposed to be making you aware and to turn you away through the truth of God's word. We, we have to remember, brethren, as it says, people, in the book of Revelation chapter 22, okay, Revelation chapter 22, like I said, Church of the Living God, this, this video is not made with the intention of uh, unto you. Uh, if you want, you know, go ahead. But um, this is for the lost. In the book of Revelation, that's the last book of the scripture, verse 11, uh, chapter 22, verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Whether they hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Brethren, we don't give up yet. Don't give up yet. Don't give up yet. You only stop doing until the Lord tells you, Fine, kaput, enough, alto. Okay? When our Lord tells you personally, that's enough. Keep fighting the good fight of faith, brethren. Believe me, I know. We know what the climate is out there. You know, the other day we were at the uh, grocery store early. Um, it's rare now that the both of us are getting out together because, you know, my wife's hip uh, need proper time to heal and whatnot. But um, we were the only ones, basically, basically we saw another couple as we were leaving. We were the only ones without a face mask. And the one guy's like, you know, got face masks if you want them. It's like, oh, thank you. And should have taken it. It's like, oh, thank you. And then put it in my pocket and then just kept on walking. I didn't do that, though, unfortunately. <laughs> I was more concerned with my wife, you know, making sure that she's stable and whatnot. But, um, you know, people today have been so, you, you lost people, have been so whooped into submission. You're whooped into submission. Go to the book of Nahum. The book of Nahum. Now you got to remember, this is what is called instruction in righteousness, and this is for warning to you, the lost people. Yet again, more warning to you. Okay, the book of Nehum. You got to remember about the book of Nehum, which is after the book of Micah. Okay, the book of Nehum is part of what is called the minor prophets, and the book of Nehum is specifically addressing the city of Nineveh, okay? The city of Nineveh, which was, of course, overrun, overtaken by Babylon. Babylon, okay? But for a little of our instruction in righteousness, okay, even though this is doctrinally, dispensationally written, and, you know, not applying to us doctrinally or dispensationally any, or anything like that, but we can learn something from this. That's the point of why we are reading this, okay? Nahum, chapter 1, verses 11 under verse 15. 
Now remember, doctrinally, dispensationally, this is specifically speaking about the city of Nenev. Okay? But you're going to find some very interesting things about this. Verse 11 on to verse 15. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor, a foolish shepherd, who has the instruments of a foolish shepherd. That's in Zechariah chapter 11. Go find it. Thus saith the Lord, though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now will I break his yoke from off thee. I will burst thy bonds in sunder. And the Lord hath given a commandment concerning thee, that no more of thy name be sown. Future fulfillment, future prophecy coming against Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The eventual inevitable destruction of Roman Catholicism. Yay, I can't wait for that. We're going to be witnessing that up in heaven. We, the Church of the Living God, we're going to be looking down, watching uh, you poor people who are going to be going through all of that. But when you see Catholicism finally fall, it's going to be a time of great rejoicing. And you Catholics, you Jesuits out there, you know that your days are numbered. But not yet, right? Not yet. And the Lord hath given a commandment concerning thee, that no more of thy name be sown out of the house of thy gods. Will I cut off, thy, off the graven image and the molten image? I will make thy grave, for thou art vile. Behold, upon the mountains, the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feasts, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. Repent, people. Repent. There is no hope for you in this world, in this world system, in the world religion, which is Roman Catholicism. There is no hope for you. There is no hope for you in Buddha. There is no hope for you in Mohammed, in Allah. Okay? There is no hope for you in Hinduism. There is no hope for you in Mormonism. There is no hope for you uh, being a Jehovah's Witness. Are you Freemasons? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Good luck. There's no hope for you other than that of Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. And today is Halloween, by the way. And what does it say? Hold your place because we're coming back here. In Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Verses 32 on to verse 36. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. Wisdom is equated with wise. Wisdom is equated with the fear of the Lord. Okay? Job 28, 28. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. And refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me. How do you hear the Lord? Through the scripture. Through someone preaching the scripture unto you. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Watching daily at my gates. Waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me. Findeth life. Our Lord Jesus Christ says. I am the way. The truth. And the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And if the Son shall make ye free, ye shall be free indeed. 
Okay? And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the Lord is that Spirit. You know, the one that indwells us at the Church of the Living God. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. And today is Halloween. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. You see the cute little kids with the ghoulish makeup and grown, grown men and women supposedly dressing up in costumes. Have you ever looked up the history of Halloween? It's, it's frightening. It's pagan. It's satanic. And don't worry. They can make it Christian. Oh, yeah, brethren. Think about that. These uh, Christians, you know, that go to the church buildings, these Christians, they, they certainly can make Halloween Christian, can't they? They certainly can. Hey, by the way, um, quit saying you can't take something satanic and Christian and uh, Christianize it. Um, yes, they can. Because remember, we who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus, whether you want to accept us or not, you're not a Christian. You're not. You're not. They're Christians. And all those who love Halloween, they hate God. Therefore, they love death. You, could, you know, if I might later uh, go on a little walk down the road where these church buildings have their parking lots filled with people passing out candy to children dressed up in Halloween decorations. These are Christians. These are Christians. <laughs> it's not funny. Oh. Back to Nahum, chapter 3. Now again, this is specifically talking about the city of Nineveh. But do you think that's the only application that Nahum chapter 3 has? I think perhaps maybe no. Nahum chapter 3. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. And hold your place here. In Revelation chapter 17. Okay. The bloody city. Now remember. Nahum is specifically talking about the city of Nineveh. Okay. But in Revelation chapter uh, 17, verse 6, verses 5 and 6, And upon her head was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lives and lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and the prancing horses and the jumping chariots. The horseman lifteth up, lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear and there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses and there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. Oh, how many people in the, I bet in the billions of people that have been murdered by Roman Catholicism. Again, this is talking about Nineveh doctrinally and dispensationally, yes. But, come on. 
Come on. Do you think this does not also apply on to Roman Catholicism? Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. The mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. And go now to uh, back to uh, Revelation chapter 17. Verses 1 and verse 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore, Roman Catholicism, that sitteth upon many waters. Many waters, what is that? Many waters. Uh, verse 15 in Revelation 17. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Nations, multitudes, peoples. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth, we just saw it, have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Oh, you people need to wake up. Oh, you people need to wake up. Uh, Nahum chapter 3 again, picking up at verse 5. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will shew the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame, and I will cast abominable filth upon thee. And make thee vile, and will set thee as a gazing stock. And it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? When shall I seek comforters for her? Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 8. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 8. The destruction of Roman Catholicism. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong, strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations, all nations, have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Come out of her. Come out of her. Uh, you want to know? Uh, go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. This is also echoed in the book of Isaiah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. You cannot have, you cannot be right with God and be yoked up with the Vatican. You lost people, you cannot get saved and remain yoked up with the Vatican. Okay? You can come from Rome onto Christ. You cannot come from Christ onto Rome. It is impossible. The two don't mesh well together because Roman Catholicism is Satan's church. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Oh, but Catholics believe. Yes, they do. So do these easy believism devils. So do these Christians. 
Yeah, they believe. The devils also believe and tremble. They don't believe on the true Jesus Christ of the scriptures, God our Father. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are the temple of, the, of God. God lives within you. So what this means is, and what agreement hath the temple of God, those who are saved, with idols? Church buildings are idols. This is not talking about a building, a structure. It's talking about your body. Okay? Ye are the temple of God if you are saved, born again, converted. Why? Because God lives within you. Okay? Making you, your body, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? So, and what agreement hath the temple of God, those who are saved, with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. <laughs> As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, Roman Catholicism. And I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Go back to Revelation chapter 18. Picking up at verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Hmm. Let's read verses 9 and 10. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. You know, smoking Joe. And President Kamala Harris, controlled by the Vatican. Okay, they're the puppets. You know that those two here in our nation, in whatever nation you are in, you know that the government is living deliciously because they're being fed by the Vatican. And incidentally, you fools, my American countrymen, you think that Smoking Joe actually took the steel of the Jesuit poniard? You, you actually believe that, don't you? I, I know you do. I know you do. Some of you have told me. <laughs> Look, I am by no means a Republican, okay? Uh, we have no say in the matter. They are selections, not elections. You people need to wake up to that, okay? If we actually did have elections by a just government, yes, I would probably vote Republican, okay? But see, the Republicans of today are not Republicans. They're Republicans. And the Democrats, they're Democommies, okay? The system here in America is defunct, all right? Okay, but yes, if I were to vote, I would, yeah, I would vote Republican if we had a just government. We do not, okay? We do not. But there again, people, th those in the government are living deliciously while the rest of us are supposed to live in fear according to their dictate. And you think, I know you do, I know. Some of, I know you do. Think that Smoking Joe was setting an example? I almost, I almost read that email, by the way, and exposed you. Yeah, you, you were cordial, but you are an absolute... An idiot is someone who is void of logic and reason. 
You think Smoking Joe was setting an example, huh? God help you. But let's continue. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment has come. You Catholics, you know. Not not you nominal Catholics, but you in the upper echelon, you know the ultimate end of your system. Why do you think they're so rabid today, people? Why do you think they're so vehement and vicious today? Because this is their best life now. Back to Nahum, chapter 3, picking up at verse 8. Art thou better than populous no, that was situate among the rivers, that had the waters round about it, whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was from the sea? Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength. Ham, Ethiopia, Egypt, type of the world. Ethiopia and Egypt descend from Ham. That does not mean... That does not mean those who are descended of Ham are all of the devil. Hardly, no. There are many Hamites who are of the church of the living God. Praise the Lord for that. Okay? Praise the Lord for that. But undeniably, Ethiopia, Egypt, directly descended of Ham. Okay? And Egypt, of course, in type, especially here, is a type of this world. Okay? Okay? Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite. Put and Lubim were thy helpers. Yet was she carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets. And they cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. Ultimate destruction. Thou also shalt be drunken, thou shalt be hid. Thou also shalt seek strength because of the enemy. All thy strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. Yeah, you Jesuits. You're all a bunch of women. You're all a bunch of cowards. You truly are. And every single one of you coadjutors that work for the Vatican, the Jesuit order, behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. You're a bunch of women. You're a bunch of women. Bunch of little girls. Yeah. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thy bars. Draw thee waters for the siege. Fortify thy strongholds. Go into clay and tread the mortar. Make strong the brick kiln. Yeah, look at all the fortresses that are called uh, Roman Catholic church buildings. Okay? I have that one video uh, walking around town the one day where I showed you that one church building that looked like a fortress. And it's uh, now the hold of the, uh, <laughs> the Blue Lotus Temple. Okay? Yeah. And that and that's isn't that strange that church buildings look like castles and hospitals today and public schools look like contemporary prisons. Isn't that something? Have you ever noticed that here in America? Isn't it strange that these hospitables, Knights Hospitalitors, Roman Catholic Order, Knights Hospitalitor, hospitals. More on that later. Yeah, okay. But isn't it strange that the public school system, schools, and the hospitals, um, they look like modern prisons? Why is that? Huh. Verse 15. There shall the fire devour thee, 
The sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like the canker worm. Make thyself many as the canker worm. Make thyself many as the locust. Thou hast multiplied thy merchants above the stars of heaven. The canker worm spoileth and fleeth away. Thy crown are as the locusts, and thy captains as the great grasshoppers, m many in multitude, which camp in the hedges in the cold day. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and the place is not known where they are. Thy shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. Thy nobles shall dwell in the dust. Thy people is scattered upon the mountains, and no man gathereth them. And ultimately, there is no healing of thy bruise. Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. Yea, praise the Lord for the inevitable destruction of Roman Catholicism. Yea, praise the Lord for the ultimate uh, uh, inevitable destruction of the Jesuit order and all her doctrines and everything. Yea, because it's coming. Got to go through some stuff first, but it's coming. For upon whom hath not thy wickedness passed continually? Thy wickedness past continually. The Jesuit order are the ones who created the psychological operation known as the poison crown. It's a psychological operation to put your people in fear, to bring out things for depopulation, to, you know, to kill people, pretty much, okay? My wife's son, my stepson through marriage, about a month ago, okay, he got sick. He got really sick, okay? People are starting to get sick now, okay? Is it the uh, poison crown itself? I don't believe so. I don't believe there ever was one. Poison crown. Look that up in Latin. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll figure it out. And you, you can all figure out what I'm talking about with the steel of the Jesuit poignard, okay? But, and I, I shared this with uh, some uh, brethren uh, a while ago, actually, my wife's son, my stepson through marriage, about a month ago, got really, really sick, okay? And his son got sick, and of course, they diagnosed him with the poison crown. But nonsense. But, see, if something is of a um, virus, if someone's going to get sick with something, they're generally going to have the same symptoms. For example... You get like a, a string of the flu. You're going to have sore throat, cough, runny nose, diarrhea, whatever. If, if, if the one person has it, if they catch that bug, they're going to have the same symptoms. But a lot of these symptoms that are being recorded are differing from person to person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. My stepson through marriage, when he got sick, no taste or smell, headache. Could not breathe. Face was twitching, um, like and stuff like that. Had um, sp facial spasms. Drained energy. His knees and stuff were in great pain. Okay, physical pain. His knees, his legs were hurting. Okay, couldn't breathe. Couldn't taste. Headaches. Even to the day he came over here on the 22nd of this, of, of this month, uh, the day after that my wife had gone to the hospital and they put, their, put her uh, leg back in, okay? He came over and he was telling us all this stuff. And I said to him, you know, that sounds like a biological weapon. And you, you watch the documentary about the Frank Olson story, okay? Biological chemical warfare is a real thing. Man-made diseases that they will release on the populace. Okay? Think about it. So many people have received the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And now they release this um, biological weapon. 
that differs in people, but yet debilitates and makes people, I mean, my stepson through marriage, his, his, his face, he was saying, uh, was twitching and stuff like that, uh, having spasms in his face. The things he was describing about his legs, his knees, his feet, and stuff like that, he could not breathe. It's a biological weapon. Could it be, you know, for upon whom hath not thy wickedness passed continually? They've weakened so many people with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And then they release, they release biological weapon with these people who are weakened by the steel of the Jesuit poniard. To start producing mass death. You need to get saved. You need to come to our Lord Jesus Christ. Broken of your self-righteousness. You need to get it through your thick head. And get over yourself. That it's your fault that he died. Your sin put him there. Your hand held the whip that scourged our Lord Jesus Christ. Your hand held the nail, hell held the hammer that hit the nail in his hand and in his feet. It was your hands that put the crown of thorns on his head. He has every right to send you to hell because of what you've done. But see, all he wants of you to come to him broken of your self-righteousness you can't save yourself have a little uh, contrition <laughs> I fear him because if you do not repent of your self-righteousness and come to him broken and contrite and fear him uh, he, he's he's gonna put you in hell and he has every right to put you there he has every right to put you there and he is just and fair and equal to do so you're going to burn, you're going to burn, you're going to burn. And it's never going to stop. That, that's, what, that's what's waiting for you. But you don't want to hear that, do you? If you watch this video, you make it this far. You have, you've, you've been warned. Unless you come to our Lord Jesus Christ broken, contrite, and fear him, and call upon his name that he may save you, unless you come to him on his terms, he's going to put you in hell and you deserve to go there. And you're going to burn forever. I don't want that for you. I don't want even my worst enemy to go there. But see, our God is just. Our God is just, and our God is a God of judgment. And he's going to judge you. And he's going to be right to do so. So please consider these things. What more can be said to you? What more can be said? So It's going to be it for this unexpected video. Thank you so much for those of you who will watch us, if you will. And brethren, Church of the Living God, don't give up. It's not the time to give up. We will know when it's time to give up. We'll either be caught up, or the Lord will say to you specifically, that's enough. So, and that's it's not yet. Thank you, brethren. We love you. We are praying for you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you so much for praying for us. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.